Hi, Dom. Hey, Mike, what's up? Not too much. How are you? Doing good. Is it I, hot enough for you? Oh, my God. I, <laughs> I hate that <laughs> expression, but I'll tell you what, it's uh, very apt around here. Right now, it's been I so think it's hot. Apt everywhere in the U.S. Yeah, it's it's just been a every. I mean, it, in a lot of ways, it reminds me of summers when I was a kid. Um, I remember like some real hot, humid summers that where it was just like very humid, and that seems to be what it is this year here. It's it's so bad. Um, it we were doing fine, and then all of a sudden this heat wave kicked, and it just has not stopped it's been unrelenting yep so, that's a good word for it <laughs> yeah 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 absolutely but um so i take it you're getting the same weather there oh yeah oh yeah we're going into a like a 10-day stretch of 90 plus degree weather yeah 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 the next few days i mean the the last few days were high 80s 90s and it's the humidity too on top of it that's brutal but um, the next few are going to be in the 90s. So it's, it's um, <laughs> like I said, unrelenting. <laughs> but but uh, let's not bore our, our many fans out there with the weather. <laughs> because yeah. we've got several things on our agenda. Okay. The, the, the main show, as you can see behind us, yep. is we're going to talk about the 1995 film Living in Oblivion, starring yeah. Steve Buscemi and Catherine Keener. And I didn't realize how famous he was, but Dermot Mulroney. Oh, yeah. Yep. But yeah. Uh, before I get to the movie, I've got two things I want to talk about. Okay. Before that. Um, one is these guys. Oh, your yes, your baby goats. So these, these are our new goats. These are mm -hmm. our new additions of the family. That wow. photo was taken. They've been out in the world for less than twelve hours. Wow! 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 They they um, they 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 actually look older than their age. <laughs> they they age so by this evening they will be leaping around. Really, really, with so wow. much energy, you will not believe it. <laughs> wow! Wow! Yeah, it's um, it's it's kind of crazy because. Uh, yeah, you were you were telling me last night that uh, you were in the process of birthing goats, and I was like, "Wow!" Oh, so these guys, uh, these guys took some effort. I mean, more for for the mama than than for us. But I yeah. think everyone was pretty exhausted by the ordeal. You should, you should put up a. You should definitely put up a video of them once, especially after they're a little bit stronger and moving around a little bit. Put up a video so everyone can see them in motion and and. Uh, because that's pretty cool. And I think a lot of people do like goats anyway. So um, baby goats are, are precious. They're we we haven't even things. got names for these two yet, but uh, we're leaning towards nutmeg and frost. <laughs> wow. Well, you know what you ought to do? Uh, you ought to put, put up a, a thing, uh, ask people if they'll name. Oh, no. Uh, one, oh, no. One I'm not making that mistake. Uh, <laughs> I am not putting that in the hands of the internet. <laughs> That's true. It could turn bad. <laughs> we all know about the Bodie McBoat face. <laughs> yeah, thing. true, true, true. Although you and, could name you could name one Buscemi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then the second thing I just have to talk about, just because I cannot get this out of my head. Sure. Is this woman? Uh. Well, I. Um... <laughs> I heard her. Georgia, Georgia Villa. Yeah. She is an don't know her, but, uh, Olympic gymnast. She's in the Olympics right now. Right. She's beautiful. And many of her photos are done with a wheel of Parmesan cheese. Why is that? <laughs> they sponsor her. They pay her money. Wow. Well, I would sponsor her. I'm like, <laughs> that is amazing. Like, like a gymnast hawking cheese. Yeah. This is incredible. Yeah. yeah. And and so, this is only one of the photos. If you're interested, she's got some incredible high-res photos of herself with, with this cheese. immense <laughs> wheel of Parmesan wow. cheese. Wow. So what's what's her name? I, I I'm gonna butcher it, I'm sure. I think it's Georgia Villa. Is she uh, Italian? 
Yes. Okay. Yeah, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. well, she's, she's certainly beautiful. I'm sure she's a good gymnast too. So I, uh, I, I'm just, you know, I'm used to all these athletes hawking like, you know, clothing and, and uh, exercise equipment, sneakers. Yeah. She, I love that. Yeah. Oh yeah. That she's hawking cheese. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's great. I, I like it. I so as like soon it. as I saw it, I'm like, okay, I yeah. got to talk to someone about this. Yeah. Why not? It, <laughs> that's, um, that's pretty amazing. Um, and, um, uh, and probably, probably, uh, we, we should have mentioned, um, Peter Dinklage too, because, oh, yeah. a, because you know, from Game he's of got Thrones, recognition. And, he yeah. wasn't in a whole lot of the movie. No, that's true. That's true. However, um, whenever he's in a movie, it's you always go, oh, it's Dinklage. <laughs> yep. Yep. So yeah. It's it's funny. I saw this movie with him in it um at least 20 years ago, if not if not 25 years ago. And that was before Game of Thrones, too. And, and I it was before a bunch of things. He did uh what Pixels, um, like the Wizard of Awesomeness. I don't know if I'm getting these names uh <laughs> absolutely correct. Um, but he's been in an amazing number of movies. Right, right. Well, he's, uh, I mean, believe me, he's hes quite recognizable now. And it's all due to Game of Thrones. Because mm -hmm. be before before um, Game of Thrones, he actually had, his career was probably more based on that. Whatever the, Whatever the role was, it was because he was the little guy. And that was probably more why he was in the movie. Whereas now his name is enough that he's, you know, actually being taken more for, you know, he's, he's giving, he's given roles that, yeah, it, it's acknowledged. He's, you know, a, a little person, but as far as, but as far he's, as the he's role, a boy. he's an, he's an, I mean, he was so good in game of Thrones and I know you said you didn't really, uh, follow game of thrones much i watched it his his role was one of the better roles and he was so damn funny i mean he was sarcastic as hell <laughs> and you know whenever he was whenever he was in a scene it, you you knew you were just gonna have some laughs because the guy was funny and um and i mean he really did a great job on that show on that show so um def definitely made a name for himself before we get too into storytelling, because there's a ton of stories around this movie. Oh, yeah. Let me discuss the movie itself, because I'm sure, sure hardly anyone has seen this movie. Yeah, yeah. Well, I certainly hadn't. This this movie is like a low-budget inside joke for the filmmaking community. Yeah. It, it follows this um, director and his crew who are trying to make a movie, somewhat artsy, somewhat independent, um, and... Everything that can go wrong does go wrong. They've got an egotistical actor. They've got a somewhat incompetent crew. Um, and just, just the sheer stress of what they're doing is part of the humor. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And um, and the, um, the egotistical actor is behind both of us right now. The... Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, but he, but that uh, is yeah. James Legros. Yes, which I I know the face, but I I whenever I hear the name, it's not something that clicks in my head. But I definitely know drugstore the face. cowboy. Oh yeah, yeah. Point Break. That's, I'm sorry. What? Point Break. Oh yeah, yeah. Point Break. Well, I know him mostly from drugstore cowboy. That's mm -hmm. the that's the role that I probably really know him from. You know, um, but yeah um definitely been in a in a few movies so his his face is something that people ought to know and people ought to recognize his face alone if they don't know his name and certainly some of the some of the roles that he's played in because he's been in some some rather significant movies so but keep so going i got to ask yeah what did you think of the movie i liked it i did not love it but I liked it. I thought I thought um, I uh, I thought it was 
I thought it was very entertaining. I did not think it was um it, it's not something it's not a movie that you 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 kind of make this reference a lot, but it's not one that if I never saw it or or if I yeah, it was not it's not something that I would I would put in people's bucket list of must see movies. Let's put I'll be the first to admit it is yeah. not a great movie. It's yeah. it's a little hard to love. Yeah. But it's just so unique. And yeah. and this is what gets me for movies. If 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 there's ever a theme of of what I like in a movie, you can tell these people loved what they were doing. Yeah, they were enjoying they they were having a good time. I, I definitely think they were having a good time. It, mm -hmm. And um and again, when it comes to when it comes to who was in the movie, um, first of all, I love Yashemi. He's he always entertains me whenever hey, he's he gonna... did a great job. You could feel his anxiety yeah. come to the yeah. screen. Oh yeah. Yeah, actually, I mean <laughs> some of the time he didn't seem like he was <laughs> he was even acting it. It was he looked stressed. <laughs> But uh, and Gather and Keener, I I I love her. She's mm -hmm. she's always good in whatever she's in. Um, and and I, I thought there was pretty good chemistry between her and Bishemi. Yeah, so I, I I thought they pulled that off pretty well. So yeah, I I I enjoyed the movie. The the um, the the I love the sarcastic <laughs> back and forth between between Catherine Keener and and. Uh, I I just lost his name again, but the guy behind you, the, the <laughs> Chad actor. Palomino in the film, yes, Palomino, yes. <laughs> well, and that's another thing, Chad. <laughs> so, so I mean, well, I mean, they did everything this they could to make this guy an obnoxious jerk. Oh yeah, and, and he believe me, he did a great job he playing. Succeeded. <laughs> yes, he did a great job playing an obnoxious character. I, I, I guess I just gonna say the um. My favorite scene, my favorite part of the movie, the, the the one part that locked this in to my brain was when they're having trouble after trouble getting a single scene. Right. And then and then Bashemi says, okay, let's do just a rehearsal thing. We, the film won't be rolling, just run it. And it's right. the best scene. Oh yeah. Yeah. They've Catherine ever done. Kinner, Catherine Kinner pulls off this phenomenal phenomenal um <laughs> here her take uh, was just incredible and and everybody's stunned and and then it's, it's like it's an uh, award-winning performance and they realize the cameraman's in the bathroom puking his <laughs> guts out and it's like what we weren't rolling so yeah um and and then Bushemi actually that was probably the meanest thing he said to her he goes you he goes you finally do like get it right and uh <laughs> And the cameraman's in the bathroom, like, you know, but um, but no, it like I said, it definitely was entertaining. And another scene that I thought was phenomenal was when the mother, who is like, kind of being portrayed as like kind of being senile, um, she comes out with when Peter Dinklage walks off the set, saying, "Forget, forget it, I'm not doing this." And uh, when he walks off the set, she comes in and just takes everything it her matters into her own hand and comes out with this great idea for for her do it walking around it was way better than the whole thing with the dwarf with well, her well walking around. have you ever had a, a dwarf in your nightmare <laughs> you know <laughs> I, love I was actually line. i was actually like going back over after that line was said <laughs> i was actually going back over like have i and I actually think I probably have at some, well. at some point, but uh, yeah, but it is true. I don't think most people think of, they don't, they don't dream of dwarves. <laughs> so, so, and yet uh, they are really used quite a bit in dream sequences. You know, what was funny? They are, they are. It's actually I'm looking at you, David Lynch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And actually David Lynch, I love though, though that freaked me out so much in Twin Peaks when he had the backwards talking dwarf, that was like, oh my God, that, that, that uh, or I don't, I don't know whether, um, yeah, it was backwards talking. That's what it was. Mm -hmm. But anyway, but anyway, that, that there was something about it that just creeped me right out between the room that they were in and just how everything unfolded with the dream. 
It was like, well, it's oh David my God. Lynch. He could show a kid eating an ice cream cone. And it would freak you out. Uh, he can. And, and actually, we need to do a David Lynch film very, very soon. Yeah. Um, it's not going to be my next pick. I already know my next pick. And I may actually tell people before we finish this out because. Uh, oh, you're not going to keep them in suspense? No, because I think I'm actually going to tell them so that because I think it's a movie that a lot of people probably haven't seen. And if they haven't seen it, um, I think they probably should see it before they watch our take on it. So, OK, let's, let's hold off, though. Let's, let's I, get... I will. I'll hold off till the till the end. But I, I will announce it. But yeah, back to this. Um, like I said, um, I, I love that scene with the mom. I just had a, I had to point that part out. But oh, that was that was. I mean, this this film had so many off the wall things. That's another reason why I love it is because it's so weird in places. Yeah, where where she claims, oh, I can just walk through walls. Yeah, yeah, and then oh, she yeah. does it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, because his whole thing was like, like, mom, how did you like, how did you get out? Like, it, it was, uh, he, he was looking at her like she needed to be constantly washed. And it's like, uh, your mom might have actually more things going on than you think. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and and not being just being crazy, uh, just be, being actually somebody that was extraordinary. Mm -hmm. But, but, but no, I, I, I loved, I love the concept. Um, and the other thing is just knowing Alicia and what, you know, your cousin. Right. We Mike, actually know some people in the film business. Yes. And, and just some of the stuff that Alicia tells me about some of the film sets and some of the things that go on <laughs> and, and some of the, you know, just some of the, the, the wackiness, the, the things that don't go right. Um, the, the, you know, th there's so many things that, um that um inside little pieces of you know information and watching this actually it reminded me of a lot of things she's told me and um so th that itself made the movie it, a little bit of fun, fun and that's why this is somewhat of an inside joke like yeah if you don't know how the sausage is made some of these things are going to be lost yeah 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 absolutely uh, but at the same time, I think for people who are, for people who are film fans, I mm -hmm. think it's, I think it's something that, um, it, you're going to, uh, you're going to enjoy it because you are, you are seeing a little bit of the process and you're probably what's that you're seeing the art. Yes, absolutely. And, and you're seeing the, you the, <laughs> the dysfunction you're seeing the, you know the actors' egos in place. The the little Behind inside, the magic. Yes, the the little uh, you know the 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 affairs that might spring up, which that was one of the problems too. Because Catherine Keener, she she ends up making the mistake of going to bed with Chad, and and that doesn't turn out well. Uh, so, yeah, but so, everyone wanted to go to bed with Chad. Yeah, well, but they certainly did all the. All the people on the set seemed like they were trying to trying to hook up with him, but uh, and he was trying to hook up with two or three different girls that were on the set at the same time. Mm -hmm. But uh, mm -hmm. but yeah, um, no, I I, uh, I what, what year was this made? Now this is I'm... 1995. Okay, all right, yeah, that makes sense because Buscemi did look, and well, so does Peter Dinklage here. They both look way younger uh, here, so. That makes yeah, sense. do you remember? Do you remember the comment that Chad made? I only did this film because I heard you were tight with Tarantino. Oh, that's right. Shemi yes. did Reservoir Dogs like just uh, the year before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Which is another talking about films that are that are favorites. I love Reservoir Dogs. So that's a truly violent movie, <laughs> but a very really? very good. <laughs> But my God, it's violent. But the uh, some <laughs> some of the scenes in that are like, holy crap! Uh, but there's Chad in the middle, and uh, Buscemi, uh, you know, to to my one side, and Catherine Keener to the on the right. So, um, so this movie was written and directed by Tom DeSillo. Okay. and I'm trying to. He's an independent filmmaker. Um, he hasn't done a whole lot 
that's gotten big. The only other thing I can think of is Delirious that also starred Buscemi. Okay. Okay. Um, when he started trying to pitch this, no producer, no studio would take this on. Yeah, yeah. No one wanted this. Yeah. <laughs> and so he he asked the cast and crew if they would work for free. Really? They well, all donated money wow. to get this done. Wow. Okay. Wow. That's how passionate they felt about this. Yeah. Well, it, it, again, it's it's something that for, I think for actors, I think it's um, it's kind of a role that you probably probably because it is a little bit of an inside. It's it's an insider thing. It's an inside joke. It's a it's it's the letting a little bit of the you know the wrapping off. So yeah, I I, I can understand. I wonder that. if this was a little cathartic for them. Yeah, yeah, because probably there are. There are probably some things that they let loose in this <laughs> that they that they thought, you know, this is my chance to actually, like, you know, to uh, to to actually show the reveal of uh, and there there's what I have to go through. Yeah, and and hey, the, believe me, it's it's funny because on the one hand, I, I think we all kind of mock celebrities sometimes about, uh, yo, yeah, you know, you you have a. You have this relatively easy job, and you've got you make tons of money. There's the mother. I I didn't have any pictures of her. She was great. That's Steve Buscemi. There's mother not a lot of pictures of this film floating around. Yeah, that's true. That that's true. It was hard to find some of the background shots. This is Buscemi after the fight with Chad. <laughs> after him and Chad have the the big blowout. Um, it was Chad. Yeah, but that's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> he he actually was pretty ineffective in the fight. Heather and Keener was actually a lot better a, a fighter than he was. <laughs> but but uh yeah, like I said, it was there are definitely some uh, some pretty hysterical moments. That whole thing with that's another thing is is the um there's that whole thing with the milk. Um they um uh, they they've got their their uh, catering um the catering cannot seem to provide fresh milk and uh apparently they were putting the milk they were putting in their coffee uh that's what made uh the cameraman sick and that's why they missed that what was it like 10 days old or something yes yeah and, uh, and everybody starts going don't drink the milk don't drink the milk after he's puking his brains out but um but yeah not not good so so the actress behind you is Catherine Keener yes let me call up um another scene you're looking for a scene i am oh i'm not seeing a great one here let's try this that the actor that played wolf okay yep that's dermot mulroney oh yeah yep he and Keener met yeah. on the set of DeSillo's first movie, Johnny Swade, and got married. Oh, wow. Okay, I didn't know that. They've That's been not... married for years. Wow, no, okay, I didn't know they were married. Huh. Okay, that, yeah, that's a, that's a bit of information I did not have. I love the thing with the eye patch, by the way. Oh, that was hilarious. Up. That was <laughs> where, where Chad kept wanting to take his eye patch. And he does. He takes it. Yeah, he does. He does. And which which uh did not make him happy when he saw that his eye patch was being used by chat. I don't blame he, him. He shimmy <laughs> handles it. Yes. <laughs> well <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to say anything, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, uh believe me, uh, th there were a lot of like little things like that that just you, you know it was quite humorous there's here's chad again hitting on one of the other women in the in the movie he is hitting on everyone in this movie if you guys haven't seen this this is entertaining it's uh it, definitely something if you want to look inside of kind of what especially 
lower budget movies, how I'm I'm sure even bigger budget movies come off like this too. <laughs> <laughs> but but um, like I said, I, I I've heard a lot of stuff from from Alicia, just little inside things, and and this Has is she not seen this movie. What's that? Has Alicia seen this movie? I don't know if she's seen it. I'll have to actually. I'd be curious. Question. That's a good question. I'm gonna have to. I'll have to run that by her. Maybe I'll run it by her tonight. But um, yeah, it, um, this is definitely. This is definitely a movie that when I watched it, I was thinking to myself, my God, that some of these stories were like dead on to things that she has told me before in the past. So I, I've never heard her talk about this one. So maybe she hasn't seen it, but, uh, and yeah, there, there they are actually at the, at the catering table, they're the craft table, whatever you, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, but, but actually that's after everyone got sick. But um, but yeah, th this they spent so much time on this dream sequence. By the way, I, I swear that that was probably the the scene that they had the most trouble filming. Mm -hmm. And the mother solves it so easily <laughs> after they go through this really uh, hard thing with trying to get the 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 Peter Dinklage to try to to, to he was asking him to Cheeto. laugh. Yes, and she kept calling him Toto, and that really kept, <laughs> that was. And then she'd be like, "Oh my God, I'm sorry. Did I say Toto again?" <laughs> and he was getting furious. But um, so but one no. of the stories I heard was that Dinklage, because of the stereotypical nature of roles for smaller people, yeah, yeah, has adamantly avoided anything like this. Really. Really? And he took this role just because, again, like everyone, they thought it was funny. Like, yeah, this is one of the things you got to deal with in the bits. Oh, of course, and and, and believe me, uh, well, I mean, I, I get it. There's there's probably there's probably only a certain amount of roles where they're going to be able to slide a smaller person in, and where it's going to pull up. So they it has to be the right role. Um, there's he's there's coming a, out with a western. Is he really? Wow, that's I'm pretty. Yeah. I can't. I, I want to say the Tinkerer. Yeah, but and I know nothing about it. I've just seen yeah. some of the screenshots. Yeah, I could I could see them managing to pull off a a western, but I think you'd have to have it done. It have to be the right one, or it's going to get mocked. But uh, and that's one of the problems with with uh, roles like that. Like now he was in a movie. Peter Dinklage was in a movie about it was like an apocalyptic one where he's like one of the last people left alive. Mm -hmm. And there's a, a young girl, probably like in her late teens, early 20s. And um, and she ends up like stumbling on him and he's surviving and surviving quite well. And she's trying to hook up with him and and like like say like let's let's make camp together so that we can survive. And he's like, well, I'm surviving just fine. fine. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, that it's like I said, I have, I have only seen clips of that and I've, I've been wanting to see it, but it looked like a good movie. Now that was a movie that even, you know, it was, yeah, he's a little person in the movie, but it, they didn't really even make it around that. It was just made around the fact that he just happens to be a little person that, and it's the end of the world, and he survived, and this girl survived, and and I don't know if there's how many other people are left alive on Earth, but uh, not many. No, I think he, he definitely worked hard to to demonstrate. It doesn't matter who you are, what you look like. Yeah. If you get the chops, you can do the role. Yeah. Well, and again, like I said, I I think it is hard. I think it is hard for certain. Th there's. There's certain roles that I think if you if you just threw them into the role, maybe if it was like some classic role that you, you know, or or like a remake or something like that, people would go, wait a minute, now nah, this isn't working. So I think it depends on the role, and I think it also depends on how it's how it's handled. Because like with this one here, they didn't make they didn't make that a part of it. And because they didn't make a, that a part of it, it was just it just worked. 
And so, uh, like I said, I won't, I haven't seen the entire movie. I've only seen parts of it, but that's not what it was about. It was about the fact that this guy survived. And yes, he he is a little person, but that's it, they didn't make that uh, the issue, you know. And uh, <laughs> as far as I know, that's never an issue in the movie. And but, then, uh, uh, that also comes down to writing. That's that's you know true. part of part of Peter Dinklage's ability to break stereotypes is his acting, and the yeah. other part is knowing when to choose a good role. Well, that's really true. That's that's really true because he could have completely blown everything mm-hmm. he accomplished with Game of Thrones had he been taking the wrong roles. And um, and yeah, if you start taking roles that are just based on okay, this. This is about a midget, and they are a midget, a dwarf, whatever. But um, it, and they throw him in the, <laughs> you know, he's he works at a bar, and they throw him, and it's like, yeah, that would have been the wrong role. Um, he 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 made a name for himself in Game of Thrones as being this hilarious, funny guy who happens to be a small guy, but he's but he's uh, the bastard. That's what they, <laughs> that's what um. And he's t- he keeps telling he keeps telling the that other dude the, he, he embrace your uh, embrace you're a bastard and he's a he goes I'm a bastard too <laughs> but um, man but he no. was he was in a great show and and when I say great I mean I enjoyed it it got canceled after one season so I don't know if anyone would share my opinion but it was What's a the- sci fi. It was, it was a science fiction. It was set in like, you know, just current day. It wasn't yeah. futuristic. But um, our government is seeing hints of an alien incursion. Right. They're right. being quiet. It's little things here or there. So like what but, they're really doing right now. <laughs> but but anyway, they authorize um, like a top secret, high level team of experts to come together to address this problem problem yeah. yeah and peter dinklage plays um a linguistics expert right who also has a gambling and drug addiction problem oh, wow wow <laughs> excellent another person on the cast brent spiner wow wow what's yes, this data do you offhand know the name of that or? i do not I'm, I'm like oh what is it and i saw what you it ought to do is put, put a put a link to it oh you're right you're right thank put you i should yeah. Um, uh, that way we but yeah, I just burned through it in like a week because it was okay. This hits my mark perfectly. Yeah. And evidently, my mark is no one else's mark. <laughs> uh, uh, well, that, no, I uh, hey, you've turned me on to a few different, a few different series, a few different, you know. Uh, I mean, uh, what was the uh, kill, Killing Eve? Oh um, yeah, Killing you, Eve. You turned awesome. me on to that. That that show is excellent. I I really got into it, and uh, we're getting off subject, but uh, we're getting very awesome. <laughs> but it, but it, people, if you haven't seen Killing Eve, <laughs> that's a good TV show. But but at any rate, uh, yeah, getting getting back to this, um, this scene here was like, this was painful watching this this whole wedding scene, and um, and just when the whole thing blows up, the, Peter Dinklage says, "I'm done." I, I'm, he walks off the off the set. They're like, "Great, how are we going to get this this scene finished?" And the mother just comes right out and does the whole thing, and it's done like in one take. And and actually, the the uh, what's his name the the cinema photographer there with the he does the handheld shot, which he's been pushing for yep. the entire time. Wolf and no, yes, Wolf, and no one would listen to him. And and of course, he has to grab a handheld. Because she comes out and does the scene, and uh, and it works perfectly. And he's like, "Wow, this is awesome!" <laughs> but I mean, that's, that? that's, that's part of the magic because you know, um, a lot of art isn't all that planned. You've got something in mind. Oh yeah, yeah. And then things happen, and you got to go with it. Well, and often, often, uh, it, whether it's the right take or whether it's you know. Those, uh, often those those are the things that actually w- the ones that work are the ones that they actually you know you'll have a you'll have a director make them do twenty takes and the first one was the was the right one and um, I think I said this very recently 
uh, I know I said it to you. I don't know if I said it uh, on one of the shows, but but um, there's a there's a scene in Cool Hand Luke where uh, Cool Hand Luke does the ukulele scene, which is a very famous scene in Cool Hand, and we got to do Cool Hand Luke. But yep. um, but he's they're trying to break him, and he he comes in and he's in real bad shape. Sits down in his bunk and grabs you know he's grabs a little it's a banjo not a uke but he grabs the banjo and he's sitting there and he's playing plastic plastic jesus and um and he's crying and of course the, the guys in the in the prison barracks there they, they can't see him but they everyone knows he's you know really struggling and um they're all kind of giving him his distance and uh, he plays the scene sings the song and uh they the director says cut and uh Newman looks at the um, at the director. And he goes, "I think I can do it. I think I can do it again and do it better." And the director <laughs> goes, "Nobody could do that better." <laughs> and he told him, "That's it. That one's that one's in the can. Uh, we got it." And uh, he wouldn't let him do it again because he he thought this was phenomenal, and it was. And uh, that's the that's the one they used. On that note, on yes. that digression, <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> This movie was was filmed in 16 days. Yes. And we may be wrapping up this video just as quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I, I I love this movie, but, you know, there's not a lot of complexity to the movie. No, no. And and I would tell I would I would say to people because I hadn't seen the movie. It was not something that uh, it was not something that I was at all familiar with. And I would say, if you have not seen this movie, I would say you should definitely get a look at it because, uh, believe me, it's well worth watching. It's it's a it's a fun movie. Uh, geez, I actually pulled up the same one. I was I was trying <laughs> to do the tag "Living in Oblivion," but uh, but oh, that's I, fine. But at any rate, like I said, it's um, it's a great take on the film industry. It's certainly on the low budget film industry it, it's a it's a great take on it and i i would absolutely recommend it so uh, like i yeah, said I mean, I, this, this is my yeah. choice so i'm definitely giving it two thumbs up yeah I, well i'll give it two thumbs up i i i, 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 I you know i'll stand by my, my my thing is i don't think it's a it's not it's not to me like a a movie that you have to see before you die but but it's at the same time, it's a it's a good fun film, and I, I would I would highly recommend it. Yeah, this movie isn't for everyone. A lot of the movies that are near and dear to my heart are not for everyone. They're they're a little yeah. quirky, they're a little strange, they're they're often non linear. Yeah. Um, but but I really do like this one. Yeah, yeah, no, I liked it. I definitely liked it, and and again, I I would say I definitely recommend it too. Um, but yeah, I'm the same way as far as uh, I mean I I like everything. I'm I've got a pretty pretty eclectic taste. But um and it depend for me it's it's about mood. If I'm in the right mood, uh, anything's on the table if I'm in the right mood for it. But um but this is definitely I I I do definitely like movies that are about the craft of filmmaking. Right. I, I mean, I, I watch a lot of documentaries on filmmaking. Um, there's, there's, uh, there's actually a really good one. I think it's called the making of film. Uh, and it's, I'll have to, that's another one we probably should have a link to. Oh, there's so many, like. but, but, um, but at any rate, uh, that's, that's actually a lot of fun to watch. So anything like that, that kind of digs in a little bit behind the scenes, but, um, there's even been a trauma movie that <laughs> shows you some shows you some behind the scenes uh, filmmaking there, but that's a little bit more traumatic for people to watch when you're watching a trauma one. But um, but yeah. Oh, did so, you hear it? again? I'm gonna digress again. But the news about um, uh, the Toxic Avenger remake. No, no, I I haven't. It really, uh, hasn't. Orlando Bloom. Wow, really? As the Toxic Avenger. Wow. I would and not evidently mind... very few theaters will show it. Wow. That's sad. That's sad. I mean, why wouldn't you show the Toxic Avenger? I and, love and it. I, 
I don't know, but for some reason, I, I haven't heard much about the movie. It was shown at film festivals to e evidently excellent huh. reviews. Yeah. And I, I think no one thinks it will have mainstream appeal. Uh, the, the trauma movies have never had real mainstream appeal. They're, they've always had a cult following. And I always loved the, the trauma. I mean, some of them were a little bit over the top stupid. But when they hit, when they hit and they did it right, they were a lot of fun and they were very funny to, to the right audience. I mean, again, another set of movies that, that that studio loved what they were doing. They enjoyed yeah. every second of that. Yeah. Yeah. And and uh, again, um, uh, that the, those movies have a very, very, uh, <laughs> you know, soft place in my heart. <laughs> I, I there are certain ones that I really enjoy, and um, the, definitely the Toxie ones, but um, but there's a few different ones that that studio made. Sure, if Nazis must die. Oh yeah, absolutely, and you know I've Romeo been and Juliet. Yes, I actually I have a copy of that. I, <laughs> that's actually <laughs> there's a few of them I have a copy of, but um, uh, yeah, Romeo and Juliet. There was. Um, Oh shoot! There was um, uh, fat guy okay. goes nut. Fat guy goes nuts away. <laughs> so, so nobody knows that one. <laughs> there are very yeah, few. Okay. We're getting really off topic. Listing I know. The, the trauma trauma film list. Yes. Well, but we've been off track on uh, the whole <laughs> time, but we just keep drifting back to it. But but that's that's okay. We're <laughs> we're covering ground. Uh, so. Um, yeah. Um, what what uh, what do you have any other trivia on this? You know, the only other thing that I discovered, I don't know if it's no. considered trivia, but yeah. as I said, I did not know Dermot Mulroney. You know, I'm I've seen him. Few, I'm sure I've seen him in several movies. Yeah. The name did not stick. But when I started researching him, one of the things I've discovered is that he is an accomplished cellist. Uh, yeah, I didn't know that. I, I mean, I know his, I know his name more than anything. He's so held I, I open for Elena's Morissette at the House of Blues. Okay, so is um, he known more as a musician. <laughs> he may be actually more of a musician than an actor. If you go to his Wikipedia page, his huh. filmography is just it's huge. But yeah. like almost half his roles, he's listed as cellist. Wow. Wow. He, he okay. played on um, the soundtrack for multiple movies, including uh, Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. Wow. Well, okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, you know, I know him more by the name. I can't mm -hmm. think of like, I can't think of films or, or role, particular roles. So I can't, I can't say that his acting career stands out to me. And I, that's, uh, if you're listening, <laughs> Dermot, I'm sorry, but I'm not diminishing your career. Uh, Even just, his role in Arrested Development? Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I. well, I mean, that is actually probably something I know him more from because I, I li really like that show, Arrested Development. But I, I thought that was a I thought that was a funny show. But um, but yeah, like I said, I just offhand. It's not his his career is not something that I just like go, oh yes, like him and I know him in tons of different roles. It's not to me, he's not the same. Buscemi, I can think of I can think of 10, 15 roles real quick off the top of my head, you know. Uh but um I mean Buscemi, everything he's in, he stands out in and just so but and I'm not trying to compare the two actors. But, but I'm just saying, Buscemi's, you know, the man to me. Uh, where, where's Where's Dermot? <laughs> okay, I'll give you I'll give you some props. But um, yeah. So so as far as yeah, go ahead. We we may need to wrap this up and save our comments for another day because sure. we could go for hours if we get off on things like Buscemi. Yeah. Yes, and we we could, and, and actually, it's a lot easier. To, for us to drift when we're talking about this particular film. Um, so I am going to throw out the name of, of what 
I'm picking for our next watch. And um, this will give you plenty of time to, to watch it and prepare for it. And hopefully, if there's anybody still listening <laughs> right now, <laughs> um, if the next movie that I'm picking for us to watch is HUD. Um, huh. the, Paul, the Paul Newman movie HUD. The three-hour um, Paul Newman movie? It's not a, it's not three hours. It's um it's uh, but it is a Paul Newman movie and it is uh, an early Paul Newman movie or earlier. Um so um so yeah, HUD. It's a black and white movie for for all those that are afraid of black and white. Um don't be afraid of black and white. There are people it's, who are afraid of black and white. There are people, there are people just like there are people that go like, oh, I don't watch movies with clothes captions or you know or like you know if, if it's got if it's a foreign movie or whatever they they don't want to watch with captions and there are people that are like that with black and white too so if you are i feel bad for you because black and white <laughs> there are people that i feel bad for your son i've well, got I nine do. Time problems but <laughs> black yeah, yeah, yeah. well absolutely 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 because for one thing i mean if you think about it um you, you look at a movie like psycho psycho easily could have been shot in color and in fact there was a mm. lot of pre there was a lot of pressure on alfred hitchcock to shoot that movie in color he had the budget he had the um he had the the, the studio wanted that they they thought that the, a black and white movie would not get the same box office appeal and he fought for it he said nope we're, we're shooting this in black and white um, but I can think of countless movies in more recent years, something like The Man Who Wasn't There. There's tons of, of movies. Oh, yeah. Are... Believe me, I'm I'm looking forward to choosing a few black and white movies, but I'm yeah. not going to list them off here. <laughs> right. Right. And, and I won't either. I will just say that uh, HUD is our next one. If you have not seen HUD, you must see HUD. And so I would highly recommend that before we do the talk on it, that you go out and see HUD and you, uh, it's, it should be streaming in a few different places, but um, at, at the very least you could rent it on Voodoo or Fandango at home, whatever you want to call it now. But, um, but at the very least you could rent it there, but I'm sure there's plenty of places where you could rent it or watch it streaming on, on other services. So uh, check out HUD because we're going to be talking about that in our next one. In one week, we'll be back and we'll be talking about HUD. Yeah, exactly. And uh, thank you guys for listening. Uh, and also, please leave that like and subscribe uh, just just so we get that in there. Dom, you're going to leave some uh, links. Uh, I'll leave some links. I got, I've got a few in mind. Um, and hopefully I'm going to post a baby goat videos. Yeah, that would be great. You definitely should. So yeah, folks, look forward to uh, to either some shorts or longs, whatever of of some uh, newly born, new into the world uh, baby goats, which uh, hopefully by then you'll know their names. <laughs> so, so, so uh, but yeah, Dom, it's it's been fun. I I truly enjoyed. Always truly, a pleasure. Always, and uh, like I said, I. Um, I uh, I definitely enjoyed this one, and uh, I will be seeing you next week, and uh, let's do it again. Indeed. I'll see you All then, right. man. Take care, man. Bye.